thank you to our sponsors, Surfshark. The guys have come through yet again. They love this channel, they love the audience, and there's a reason they keep coming back is because people are interested in getting a VPN, Brian. What is a VPN, I hear you say? A virtual private network. Correct. Virtual private networks are very important in the modern internet. They keep you anonymous online, so all those nasty people out there can't keep tracking you and what you're doing because your business should be private. Whether it is just surfing around online or whether you've got something you want to sort of keep to yourself. Either way, Surfshark giving you incredibly well, cost-effective service mm -hmm. at the same time as keeping the quality there. Not only that, but it's not just on your phone or on your laptop or wherever. It's on all the devices that you own. So if you get Surfshark, and it is a great offer for this Surfshark, then you can put it on your phone, you've got your iPad, it can go any on any of the devices that you one have. One size fits all, Lawrence. It Genuinely, one size does fit all. What is the offer? Well, the offer is 83% off, three months for free, and they've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it for 30 days, in those first 30 days you've got it, you can go, you know what? Not for me. Not it, feeling that it. That right is now. unlikely because they are such a great company. They offer such a great service. Yeah. So we believe in them, and that's why you will. They really are fantastic. So thanks a lot to Surfshark for sponsoring this podcast. We really appreciate it. There are plenty of other uses out there online, but if you get the service, you can find out what makes Surfshark the VPN for you. Okay. Okay. Just looking through, um, I opened it up to uh, the, this slot online said what do you want us to talk about so go on then what are the what, at the top at the top of the pod what what sort of things are they saying i mean one of the replies just first first reply first reply the Mid whole thing midget porn so what do you what do you think of niche pornography such as midget porn i mean everyone's got i'm not sure you can say midget anymore i think you have to say uh people of smaller i'm quoting him here right okay yeah so this is not what i would have called it no what would you have called it you I, mean, called I don't really feel comfortable just describing it in any way shape or form because, what do you mean well it just sounds smaller people still have sex you, you're, yeah, just, yeah. you're just on the other end of the spectrum Sm smaller adults yeah just to be clear i mean i'm hungover, so this is probably not the best time to do um to do a podcast but it's the queen's death should we start on that at least get that get that out there because and then we'll do the midget i wore the t-shirt for just for her that is the album cover for was that sex pistols yep Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, he, uh, the lead singer of the Sex Pistols, was notoriously shut down by uh, a good friend of the Queen. Uh, who shut him down again? Uh, Jimmy Savile. Yeah, because he was the Johnny one Johnny Rotten was the one who went, we all know about your seedy little stuff that you're doing, Jimmy. And then he never got another um, gig, yeah. apart from the butter ads. Bit of a conspiracy guy. Um, the, the, the opening line uh, to the song that sort of made them the most famous, God save the queen, the fascist regime. Yeah. I thought it was, I um, am an antichrist, I am an anarchist. I am an antichrist. I am uh, an anarchist. That was a really good song. Don't know what I want, but I know how to get yeah. it. I want to destroy. And then he says, possum pie. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember the rest of it. Yeah, but the point I is... I want to be... Um, anarchy. In the city! Yeah. <laughs> that was the best bit. Pretty sure my dad loved them when he was in that... No year. fucking shit, Brian. Yeah. Your dad looks exactly like the kind of guy who still listens to those guys and goes, bloody good stuff, this. My dad's got like a Mohican at this point, you know. He's, he's in his 50s. You had a Mohican... You had, no, a, Mo no, you had a Mohawk at one point. Yeah, but like... Yeah, but I was 20. Wait, do you mean like a, like... Not not quite pointed right. up, but it's like slick back, but it's like... Sh yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking like... Brock Lesnar style. Chuck Liddell sort of right, shit. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so... So the Queen sadly passed. Obviously, we're devastated. Sad, Devoed. A sad, a sad day. A sad day. My, my favourite my favorite message. Can I repeat the message you sent me? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. fine. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence messaged me immediately. I said to Lawrence, look, we need to have a little chill while this happens because people won't be able to handle the way we... Like, we'll get all the people crying, bitching and moaning. Have a bit of a Respect. Um, right. But Lawrence messaged me going, this is almost as sad as when she killed Diana, <laughs> which was just like, and we just then sent each other message after message she after did. message, saying the things that we can't tweet out because we know that people uh, will use that to try and cancel us. Goodbye, um, England's rose. Suck a dick, bitch. Uh, oh, she's okay. been dead a week now. We can say what we want. Although this will come out, I think, the day before her funeral. That is good timing. Right. Um, 
So what, I, what, what my favorite bit was is, is, is Los then sent me uh, the iTunes link to uh, Elton John Candle in the Wind and then and, and just say press play and let it all out. Because <laughs> it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. They hashtag the candle burned out long before your legend never will. That was the only the song queen song. I acknowledge. The, the song he sung was for the woman who very mysteriously was killed uh, at the height of her popularity when she was um, challenging the royal family. Coincidence. And harboring the body of a small Muslim fetus inside her. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. That's what they said at the time, though, didn't they? Didn't, no, that's she, what they said. She was with a very rich um, man called Dodi Al Fayed, who also was tragically killed in the car crash. Dead as a Dodi. And um, when you look back at that whole thing, you know, she does the interview. Then, you know, the 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 the, the brood mare, as she was called, basically a. a, a a beautiful white girl, posh bloodline, was then picked, hand selected, even distantly related to the royal family. Really? That's what they said. Right. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, at that level of aristocracy, of course, like, it probably is that way. I mean, let, the, there's, there's a good reason why certain members of the royal family were, let's just say, swept under the carpet. Right. Uh, because I mean, that's definitely a very kind way of putting what the royal family did to those people, but okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the, Pretty horrific stuff, it, the way that the royal family hid that. Whether it was the royal family or the royal institute, I mean... Whatever, whatever. it's the same thing. It's in cahoots, um, isn't it, really? And uh, basically, Diana was killed in the most mysterious of circumstances I have ever... Like, ever read up on like it was mm. so bizarre so much of that is it screams murder it just does she was killed by a pepperoni pizza wasn't she uh, uh, sorry paparazzi sorry i mean literally uh, by the way if she'd ate a bad pizza and died it would have been probably more believable right. than the official story sure. do you know what i mean it's it's so yeah um so from that moment on it sort of makes you realize that these people still are living in an era where outwardly they have to act like they're moving with the times yada 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 but in reality it's it's it's, it's game of thrones basically like they, they, this is the type of but the queen so um there was this touching moment on one of the queen tribute i've watched a few of the queen tributes just because i'm interested in the history of it right and the way they portray it the Queen did bow her head when Diana's uh, car went by. Did you not remember Can, can that? you believe that? This is the thing, right, is a lot of people were turning on the Queen at that moment mm. because of the way things had gone in terms of Diana and her relationship and the royal royal family's treatment of Diana. And which, as we've seen with Harry and Meghan, the sway that the royal family to this day still has yes. over the tabloids is is unbelievably powerful. Can I just ask you one question? You know this podcast is sponsored. I don't care. R right. Okay. You know, you think we start the podcast for I this? I don't care. Okay. And the point is, is the the sway that the royal family still have over the uh, tabloids. Now we see, even now, when when we're supposed to have a, a press that are harder to control than ever because of the internet, and Opposite. yet we see in the way Meghan was demonised and Kate was, uh, you know, made a, was some angel. I drive. And, and looking back at it, it was clear as day that they were trying their best to take Diana down on a public level, but Diana played the game better than they did, and she had to go. She did really well. Which, like she was a fucking she very got further smart than woman. anyone else on, um, you know, Tomb Run, Tomb Run, or whatever it was. Yeah. You know, she was really good at that as well. And she did win the hearts of the people. Well, that, that was the point, and that's why she had to go. And but but the Queen on the funeral of Diana would step forward and bow her head as a mark of respect. respect. But or, but that was literally some godfather shit. That is literally the moment where, you know, like you're, you're making out like you're friends with your enemy. I mean, right, it, it, smart. It, it was, and the fact that so many people believe that, it blows my mind how, and, and the fact that we even have a royal family blows my mind. Oh no, Brian, come on now. There's a time and a place for this, and we all know that questioning sorry, the royal sorry, family. Sorry, sorry, it's the tourism. It's yeah. the tourism. No, it's not the, the tourism. Numbers, Brian. The numbers no. are there. If you want to check. Oh, sorry, what, what was that? We, we found out the numbers of. 
Not, well, not true. The, the, and we've also found out that they've never released the numbers since we found out the last numbers weren't true. Yeah, Can we get yeah. those numbers again? You might need to run the numbers again. Don't need to run no numbers how, again. How, how much tourism. money do they take out of our taxes versus how much they bring in for tourism? Unfortunately, tourism money turns out was a load of rubbish. Back to the chosen by God stuff, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's go tricky back that, that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty tricky. I yeah. mean, the, God love the, the idea that we, we live in a country where we have a royal family who are chosen by God that 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 is literally what this is all stemming from. I kind of wanted to. It's ask mental. About that. I did want to it ask. Is, it's mental. You know when you watch like Game of Thrones or Russia Today, <laughs> and you go and Same there's thing. there's something big going on in Russia, and all the people are just sort of going, "Yeah, we best just bow our heads and not do anything to upset the apple cart." That's what this is like. Like there was a guy. You know the the genius though of the royal family is. They have gotten it into people's heads. The, the, the beauty of what they've done here is they now have no responsibility for the state of the country at all. Sure. They're not blamed for anything. They're not held accountable for anything. They live in their massive fucking mansions and they big old, sit on their big golden thrones. And meanwhile, they they allow someone else to take the fall in they've got the lightning rod in front of them who is constantly blamed for everything wrong with the they country must have loved boris johnson but of course he, he's perfect and these guys take the fall take the fall and all they have to do is shake the hand you keep taking all the money you keep sure. spending all the money and no one ever questions anything because it's they've always been there it's always been like but this. they have always been there is, is it's mental it. though and but and, and i mean the queen's been I, around I've since seen Graham Sooness. I, I've seen Graham Sooness, and I mean, look, Graham uh, is an old man, and I get that for him. And there's a lot of old people who have a certain affection because of the indoctrination that they've been subjected to from the day they were born. Sure. Their parents have believed, and in, in a time of war, in First World War, for example, Second World War, fighting for queen and country, or king and country. It gave people um, a, a sense of pride. It gave people a sense of ownership of you will not take down my. This is a my pl a place to focus. And, and I and I get King. where where it came in handy to, to a certain extent to get people motivated. But we are so far. It's it's a lot like religion. It's all of this is a form of control, and it's time that people wake the fuck up. Uh, sorry, are you saying the revolution? I just didn't get rid of them. I don't know what, what, what. Uh, cries revolution, Brian. We'd have to. You, we would have to march. And you Either know what? that, or, we, or, is, or or I'm totally wrong, and we should all be dropping off more marmalade sandwiches. They actually said drop. Don't drop off any more marmalade sandwiches. Can because, you explain that to people who haven't seen this clip of of the country, that so, the state that we're in in the UK right so now? So the Queen did a clip with Paddington, and I think Paddington and the Queen are sort of quite interlinked anyway, because people sort of think, well, you know little what's paddington paddington bear all oh, right know? the little teddy bear paddington the, the i think we should call him paddington the immigrant bear <laughs> and the queen and paddington the immigrant bear are quite close in this little clip weirdly he has an english accent despite growing up in panama where does he grow up in where's he from where's why, why are you asking from? rovin because why rovin are you, why are you asking our indian cameraman why a foreign bear would not have a uh, foreign accent. You don't have what? a fucking. Why are you using You him? don't have a fucking clue about Paddington the Bear. The only other person in the room for me to find out anything from. Where? Peru. That's the one. And it turns out Roven was handy in this I mean, fucking Google, scenario. Yeah, right. Google did. So, yeah. Um, and those two, they, had, they did this little clip and people loved it because the Queen was sitting opposite Paddington. What ultimately they did was they sat the Queen at the table and then superimposed Paddington afterwards. So the Queen was really just sitting at an empty table. But people had this idea that the Queen and Paddington uh, are friends. And so they've been dropping off marmalade sandwiches because I think the Queen made a comment about marmalade sandwiches at the time nothing more useless by the way to a monarch than food they've got as much as they could ever wish for i mean i just hope the homeless um I'm not manage to get this is what that. pissed me off all right yeah. is there are people in this country who don't like the homeless or don't like poor people or don't like or, or talk about oh well you know food banks and all that they 
when it comes to Queen, we drop all of that shit and we go, no, drop off the marmalade sandwiches over there, mate. That's all fucking good. The woman you. on the gold throne yeah. who's no longer able to eat. Might need a snack. She might need a snack. We're not going to put it in our tomb like some sort of Egyptian idea. You know when they used to go, oh, take it with you to the next That'd life. Be fucking genius. Just though, a shitload of marmalade sandwiches Isn't that stacked genius, up though? inside of a fucking coffin. But you know, you know, if we were in a country where, for instance, say there was someone who was possibly a paedophile parading near the Queen's coffin. Or at least, at best, he's a sex offender, all right? Parading near the Queen's coffin, right? And that's, by the way, no one ever thought we'd have to say the phrase, at best, he's a sex offender on a podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. If you saw that man parading next to a coffin and someone went, it's not R. That Kelly. guy's a sex offender. No, it's not R. Kelly, we will get onto it. That guy's a sex offender. And everyone goes, oi, not the time or place, mate. I've never seen anyone who's ha, even- Have a bit of respect. Have a, have a bit of respect for that sex offender. The what? Well, it was never proven. Right. It, it was never proven because we never went to court because he paid them off with right. the Queen's money that we pay her. And not only that- What a woman. I she think, was such a good she, woman, she Lawrence. She's so bloody good. She Honestly. Do you know what Graham Sooness called her like the best Britain ever? <laughs> That's not true. It's not true. It's not true. He it said was... the best Britain ever and the best woman ever or something like that. I was, the best I woman was, ever. I, I was literally watching Graham and you know, you get, you get emotional sometimes. And, and he you was, do. He was, and I was just like, what a life you've had, Graham. The fact that you- you Trauma, deep, deep like, trauma. It, it, it's just mad. It is just mad. Okay, but for a second, try and entertain with me the idea that other people, that the other perspective. Just, just, why would people, why is this important to some people? Do you know, why is the Queen, to Graham Souness, to a certain generation, it, is it because they grew up this- It's tradition. No, but it, it, to me, it was also, they grew up with no internet. There wasn't really much TV. There was very little radio. So one of the well, only- they, 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 couldn't, they couldn't Google Illuminati. They couldn't figure it out what was going on wow. this entire okay. fucking time. Yeah. Whereas our generation, I'd like to think outside of the ones who, you know, still fucking love Both this the bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've worked out that we're under control. If, if you thought we were a free country, you clearly weren't paying attention during COVID, you fucking idiots. Right, but the Queen didn't have anything to do with COVID though, did she, David? Uh, sorry? No, sorry, Brian. <laughs> 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 the point is, is well, the Queen certainly beat COVID. Do you know what I mean? She, did the Queen get COVID? Well, exactly. I like the idea, exactly. by the way, that ultimately the man who caused this was Boris Johnson, who refused to wear a mask and then shook the Queen's hand on yeah. that day. Mate, I'll, I'll never, I'll never forget that. <laughs> this woman sat on a gold throne, man, in 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 a country where gold's very hygienic. We've we've literally allowed her to take so much money out of this economy. She's one of the biggest landowners in the world. Why? Really? Why? Because she has royal blood. And we, we literally allow this to happen while this country is struggling like fuck. I, that's what I struggle with. All right, I, I get, I understand. Can you at least acknowledge with me his, as, a, as a point in history, this figure and this person dying is a is a historic moment because it, well, it, in, in, in like historic terms, this is historic. I, I get you know that, what I mean? it should be that the last one. It, right. It should be the last one. The, 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 all of the, the homes and everything else should be sold off to, to and donate the money to the needy of the UK. Uh, get rid of it. We now go into uh, a regular government. Fuck all this president. royal shit. A president? Yeah, a president's fine. Wow. Fuck all this royal shit. Mm -hmm. You do not have the right to rule this country any longer because we all realize the idea that you have royal blood is a big pile of shit. So, but outside of the royal blood The Punch thing. and Judy show is over now. We're adults now. We've woken up. Aside from Grey and Sooness and a few others, we've woken the fuck up. And there is a very long line. It's time to go! No, I'm seriously. Um, um, I, Claude meant, will be waiting for her at the was, pearly gates. There is to be a fair, long... I don't know if Claude and her are going to the same place. I think exactly. Claude's going to the good bit. Yeah, exactly. She's... Maybe the Queen will haunt Buckingham Palace for a little while. That will be a good tourism piece. I love the idea, but you know what? The, more people have seen the Queen, or at least the box of the Queen, over the last couple of days than saw the Queen the whole this is time what I'm talking about, when they came to Buckingham Palace. A lot of people, people on the news- People, when they say tourism, they act like the Queen was outside of Buckingham no, Palace taking selfies yeah. for a five or a pop. You know what I would have done if I was Buckingham Palace though? I would have done, you know- Stuffed her. I would home alone it. 
I would have put, uh, I would have put like a, you know, the, the cut out of the queen on a little train track and they would have gone, she's in that room. They turn the light on midday. There's the queen. There's a little thing. And then you know that one where he's in the shower and he's dancing, he turns him around. That's what Get they do. Yeah, yeah, you naughty little pervert. I'm going to slap yeah. you silly. Exactly. That's yeah. what they do with the queen. As oh, she- we're cocking. <laughs> exactly. Frankie. Yeah. I give me just a count of three to get your <laughs> low down dirty carcass out of here. But they do that as the tourists are walking around Buckingham Palace. Uh, and they have little things like you walk in on the queen, like doing a trousers up as she's getting off the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Like, and just a little do you think the queen you know? wiped their own ass or do you think if she, she didn't, had a, I think it's weird do you think she had a servant do that for I, her? if she didn't I want to hear the story from the person who will ultimately tell the story like this a moment I must recall was the queen was completely naked on the toilet it was special to me because I remember seeing her droopy breasts and she said I've got diarrhea <laughs> And in that moment, I thought, I've shared something there with the Queen that no one ever else will have. Yeah, special. That special. Was special. We both laughed have on you, that day. Have you heard the... the, the, the she the, shat her guts out. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard... Have you heard how many I, like accounts from people who n- had a special moment with her? There are hundreds that of are them. just so n- nothing, and yet to them, because they were with the Queen, they are like obsessed by it. Right. Uh, uh, Theresa May has one. Roven told me about this. I mean, at least he passed on the story. I, I thought it was a great. I think it's not even a story. It's the beginning of a story that you then go and she went to this picnic. She, the, the, Theresa May then says, everyone had to muck in as if the Queen doesn't have to, like people following her all the time, and everyone set up the picnic themselves. Theresa May has to do the cheese plate. The cheese plate goes down on the side, but oh, Theresa May drops some cheese. She's, She's so silly. She's cl- clumsy Theresa. And she, <sighs> so she goes, oh, five second rule. And she bends over, picks up the cheese, but she has a decision to make. Do I place the queen's cheese back on the plate or not? I just dropped it in some poison. In the, in the, that is also interesting. In that moment, she places it back on the plate only to look to her left. It's only the bloody queen sitting on a bench watching her, isn't it? But they share a little knowing look. Either that or the queen's um, cataracts had kicked in. But <laughs> either way... <laughs> Either way, it was a moment where <laughs> Theresa got acknowledged by the Queen. I love the idea, by the way, the Queen can't see more than like five feet if beyond there. Theresa goes, we shared a moment. If there's one thing that you realise when you watch um, The Crown, for example, right? Right, a documentary, now, famously. Now, the Crown, obviously, is is a you know dramatised version of events, that, of, of the things that they know about the royal family. But the point is, is... Even a dramatized version of the Queen's life Mm -hmm. still is incredibly fucking boring. This woman did nothing. She has done not all of this, all the great she did for the country. Are you fucking kidding me? She went to a. Are you kidding me? She basically had tea and fucking scones every fucking day for the last fucking 70 fucking oh, years. My. Oh, God. And, and what was she doing? She didn't even, she did nothing. Who's she gonna... did? Oh, she went to a country and, 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 you know, showed her face every now and then. What a holiday. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Who's going to go to the countries that resent us ultimately and have a tea with the people that still don't like us and go, well, this was lovely. I'll be giving everything back soon, but not now. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and then they leave. Mad. And then they don't come back for another 25 years. And then 25 years late, later, they come back and they go, we'll be giving everything back soon, no. but not this time. <laughs> and then again, they're back on the fucking flight. They never, they never get them like in the place where they go, okay, give the jewels back now. And they go, next time. <laughs> Thanks for the tea. And they're off. That's what happens every time. A bit, it's Who's going to fulfill this it's role? Fucking mental. We that, will miss her. That we that at this point, right? Look, I'm I'm almost accepting, right? Like I get why we've done it the traditional way up until now. Nobody even likes Charles. Nobody likes him. He's also come Aside across from Graham Souness, no who one said, likes and I quote, "You'll make a great king." Really? I. You know the funny thing is, Graham Souness. You know we've all, he's had his knockers. This is what pushes me over the edge with Graham Souness. Mm. And I go, not anymore, Graham. I don't need, don't need to hear any more from you, thank you. 
I don't think that we need any more of that. But if anything, weirdly, a lot of people in England are going, sort of respect that guy now. Yeah, I didn't really like him before, but I kind of like him now. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of weird, but I don't like him. It's, it's sad. It is sad. sad what, what, is, what is sad? No, the whole thing's sad. It's just really sad. An old lady who had such a comfortable life mm -hmm. and, and so all the best healthcare, the best of everything her entire life. Clearly not. Died she lived to 100. A, a died. A, well, how old was she? 98. Six, something like that. 96 or 98. Late 90. She lived into her late 90. Either a good World Cup or a good Euros. And, and her husband. Both of them had very long, comfortable, luxurious lifestyles. Mm hmm never had to lift a finger for themselves their entire fucking life absolutely i'm not being horrible here like i'm not i'm not saying not like i'm glad place. she's dead or whatever i'm just calling place. calling it out for what it is which is a little old lady died after a lovely life fair play i'm, I'm not glad she's dead necessarily i'm just not indifferent. necessarily yeah i'm indifferent i don't care mm. i do not care do you know the same way the queen didn't give a fuck about me in my life i feel the same about hers it works both ways i'm sure we both feel the same about each other. I'm pretty sure. In fact, one thing I would say is I actually think the Queen gave, and I think this is a tribute to her, less of a fuck about you than you gave about Absolutely. her. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what that's the kind of woman she was. Well, the, the difference between me and her is I funded her lifestyle in some small way. Did she ever sponsor the kickoff? Not once. Did she fuck? Did she Did fucking she fuck? fuck? Balmoral needed a new roof that year. Yeah. We had to go short and no one got to cover yeah, the that, Chelsea that's Arsenal another game. Thing. When, you, when you watch The Crown, it's another thing that pops out is these cunts, the fucking lifestyle they live is outrageous. Her and all that fucking Corgis, honestly, who's gonna inherit the corgis? They're saying, Don't the shut up, you so, fucking cunts. Another piece of information I found out is that the queen wasn't thrilled that the corgis would outlive her for long. So they, they just shoot them in the head now, will they? I don't know if they want them put down, but I don't think she wants them to live a long life without her because... Stop feeding them now then. Separation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Put Char them on a vegetarian diet, that'll sort it. Okay, Charles doesn't seem like the most likable chap from the short clips I've seen of him. Have well, you seen the look, one of him doing the ink on the table? Again, look, when he goes... In the crown, in the crown, right? Have you seen the pen? And have I, you seen the pen thing? No. Okay, so the pen thing, he's got a fountain pen and they have to go, is it like the signing of something in Ireland? They have to go and sign all these papers uh -huh. just to make sure that he's got the deeds to Ireland or something. Oh, I've lost the bloody deeds to Ireland again. Well, not mine anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll give it back next time. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, <laughs> Charles hasn't been picking up for 25 years. Next time, beep. You've reached the voicemail yeah, of that's Charles. That's the way it King. was with Wales, though, wasn't it? Like, he had to go and go to school in Wales for a bit and that. Right. To prove that he cared about it. Yeah, exactly. Like the Queen did with that time when all those people got killed. So, um, mm -hmm. he signs. Show your face. Yeah, exactly. Next time. Next time. We'll, we'll shed some tears. Um, so, he signs something with a fountain Fucking pen. robots. And then... It turns out the fountain pen has sort of, I guess because he's got these like- Claws. He does have quite cumbersome, what I'd call, quite cumbersome well, hands. I, I, they're quite reptilian, some may say. <laughs> All right, David. And then he, so he's basically crushed the pen to within an inch of his life. I'm, I'm surprised we don't see Charles signing paper like this. Yeah, like crayons. And then he goes, oh, bloody thing. Bloody thing. It's always this bloody thing. And then Camilla takes off him and goes, it's everywhere. It's nowhere. You can't see it anywhere. It's literally, there's barely any so, ink. So, and he storms off. So there, there's a few things um, to talk about here. Uh, the Queen Charles. couldn't cry. Could, what? She, she never cried. They, for, the for, royal family seem to have a problem with excreting uh, liquids from their body. Uh, it's, 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 well, apart from Jeff, apart, apart apparently from Andrew, who's very good at seating some some liquids from his body, yeah. but other liquids from his body harder to get out. Uh, so the Queen was not an empath, right? She was a fucking robot. Let's be honest. Yes. Really, like, Harlan style. You, you you only have to do a little bit of reading up to know that about really? her. Yeah. Was she not stoic? Would you? I'm only putting this other argument for. Was she not a woman who thought? I need to be. I need to be the image of consistency and stoicism that, that Britain but, sees but itself that, that's as. That's like c congratulating someone for having no personality and then going, "She was stoic." The reality was, she didn't have a, a, a exactly a vibrant personality. That's mm. why Princess Diana shone like a fucking uh, lighthouse in that fucking royal See. family because she was around a bunch of fucking robots. Respect the dead, Prince Charles. 
he was a fucking cockwomble. Like in all of those, uh, in all of those stories that they recount in the Crown, like he was horrible to her. He had not an ounce of empathy about him. Wasn't he about nine years older than she? Yeah, but I mean that's not a big deal in in the royal family or whatever. I I get it is when she's sixteen. All right. Okay, I didn't realize that. Mm. Um, But the point is, is um, he like when she was really struggling. His his treatment of her was Poor. shocking. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you're just like, come, mate. She's the fucking mother of your child. Like, show a bit of care. You said child there. You don't mean you don't mean the word children because you think uh, Harry was uh, sired through another person within the family. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. I think they're probably uh, related. But There's no one else in the royal family with. Oh no, there is someone else in the royal family with red hair. It's um. Is it Eugenie or... Uh, I don't know. There was rumours that he came from another one, but... Um, I, once but met, then, I once met one of the royal family. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of Andrew's daughters. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's not Eugenie, but the other one. What's the other one called? Why are you looking at Rovin? Rovin does Rovin work. worked for PA. Yeah. Beatrice. Beatrice. Princess Beatrice. Well, yeah. how, that must I be... Met a, her. I met her. I met her at a, what at was a she club like? night. Well, you met her in a nightclub? Yeah. Did she like a bit of the old McKenna? We were chatting for a little while, but ultimately, <laughs> um, it, we imagine you in the royal family. It'd be man. terrible. It would be. I'd just be me going. I'll take you all down. Mm. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> Enjoy your dinner. Well, that- no. So we. I went to a club night, like a student club night. She happened to be uh, enrolled in the same year as me. I was in a small group of friends, and one of our group of friends was in the same class as her. So in walks Beatrice like uh, she was she had two massive bodyguards on either side of her and for the whole night they just followed her around and there was weirdly one guy in our group like a super gay guy in our group and he was like he was I mean it was he was evidently very effeminate and homosexual you know and uh, but for some strange reason this man had an obsession with the royal family so he was like so into it so I'm, I'm It's chatting. quite ironic. Why? Do you uh, think they'd hate him? Do you think anyone in the royal family is gay? I would bet on it, but I think that they wouldn't be able to Henry, publicly Henry say it, you know. I get you, William. So I think at that point, I'm just, she's like here, I'm like here, we're chatting. I didn't, I couldn't reach out to touch her at all. I couldn't sort of shake hands or anything because there were two big guys either side. We exchanged some pleasantries. And, you know, I said, you know, good night, cool, yeah, good to see you, yeah, wicked, all right, great, see you later. I turned back around, there's that gay guy right there, and he goes, you've just met the royal family. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's amazing, isn't it? I was like, yeah, really amazing. He was like, isn't she beautiful? And I was like, not really. It reminds me of that guy who we watch who is obsessed with the royals. The guy with the hats and the badges yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he was there. He's clearly gay. Have you seen the clip of him? I mean, I've seen the clip of him. He's, hot. he's a fucking state. He looks devastated. Absolutely <laughs> devastated. I'm not joking. Really? The guy looks like... But the funny thing is, he's devastated, but at the same time, he's so devastated that he has to document everything. Have you... Right, so... Have you, should we talk about the reaction from the public to the death? Because Very sad right day. now, sad as day. we're recording this, there's sad a queue day. of people sad. to go and see the Queen's coffin, mm. which probably doesn't even have her body in. If we're being honest, they're not going to just leave the queen lying around Do you think where wh- the public can get near it. Because there's bound to be a psycho there. That is actually, yeah. Like the, you- the real queen in the back, and they've just got like a little coffin with a mannequin in there. I don't think it's open, though. It's not open casket, not though. Open, no, so it's closed. That, so that's it could just be point. anything. That's the point, though. I you, think it's Jimmy Savile's you, dead body in that. In that and you, people are paying tribute to Jimmy <laughs> Savile's dead body. People are going through the room and going, Second time round. goodbye, England's rose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a queue of people just waiting to nod to the queen. Seven hours long. The queue is seven hours. That is double the... Get a life, you fucking pricks. Really? Man. Get a life. Do you not think again, historic moment. Don't give a fuck. Historic moment to be able to walk through a room and nod at a box. Historic moment. These cons probably didn't even go to like their own family members' funerals. I do often wonder this. Like, there, you know, the people who do really love the royal family tend to be the kind of people who don't get along very well with their own family. Because they sort of go, it, they sort of go, well, I don't have that, but bloody hell, the queen's good I mean, at keeping her family if, together. If you haven't woken up to what the royal family are now, after the mysterious death of Diana, the treatment of Harry and Meghan, and the fact that Prince Charles, 
His his uh, his letter to Camilla that was revealed, where he said, "I want to climb up inside you uh, like a tampon." Did he say that? Do you not hear the tampon thing? Okay, okay. Really? We got we got a. It was some shit like it was some dirty weird shit like that. Him and Ryan Giggs write very similar poetry. I want to be inside you like a piece of tampon. toast in a toaster, like um, a baguette in an oven, like a charger in an iPhone, um, but like a really premium one. Tampon gate. Um, Tampon gate. Right, racy phone They're conversations. They're calling her vagina a gate. Racy phone conversations recorded between Charles and his then woman on the side. How it revealed they were very into each other. Right. Um, they so much began their relationship in the seventies, and basically, um, will right. she become queen? She will. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Is that queen elect or something? Queen. queen what? Queen, queen consort. So consort. she consort. Yeah, queen consort. Charles. Oh God. I'll just live inside your trousers or something. It'll be so much easier. Camilla, what are you going to turn into? A pair of knickers? Oh, you're going to come back as a pair of knickers. Charles, oh, God forbid. A Tampax, just my luck. This exchange was followed by jokes of Charles turning into an entire box of tampons and being chucked down the lavatory. He was into some sort of humiliation shit, huh? Diana's reaction... What's Diana's reaction to the tampons? Di Diana, Diana went, he used that exact line on me. Apparently she described the conversation as sick. It's so weird because... I think that's quite sweet though, isn't it? I well, mean, that's, that's the, branded uh, sexual banter. The sad thing was is that Camilla tampons. was like a friend of uh, Diana and actually... Yeah, they had like a weird exchange where she sort of discouraged her but encouraged her on other things. Uh, Camilla, and... Camilla basically was fucking with Diana's head early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to... to was Charles. Yeah. Um, and look, at the end of the day, uh, affairs happen. It's not the end of the world. No. But it's, it's the murder I've got a problem with. Really? <laughs> Just to be clear. Yeah. I, I think it's also, I mean, I don't like... Death by pepperoni. Uh, for me, I thought it was worse that Charles, like, because the Queen didn't like divorce, did she? She really wasn't a divorce woman. Like, she was a woman who was like, everyone must remain together. But then within her era... I think like a lot of her family all just went, yep, yeah, off they go. And so Charles yeah. got into this position where he was the next guy and he was meant to be like the one. Andrew wasn't really the one. Mm -hmm. I think it sort of put him in a weird position, didn't it? And he, he, he wanted to just be a Tampax. He was, he was bullied at school and everything. Like he No was, fucking shit. Look at the guy, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. He was a, a He's real- He's primed for it. A weird little fucker. He wanted to be Tampax, Brian. Yeah. This guy fantasized about being a Tampax. It's a strange thing to come up with because most men aren't really that keen on fucking during the- uh, Period. During the shark week. Time. You know what I mean? Shark week is what you call it. <laughs> wow, okay. Do you, I guess, yeah, sure, I get that. Camilla, I don't, I mean, I don't understand. I felt it's, like- Imagine ch choosing Camilla over Diana. It shows a lapse of judgment, I think, in his life. And the Do fact you know that he's I mean? now king. You made that decision and now you're in charge of all of us, you fucking- Exactly, it's a real problem for yeah. me. I get the point though, You, we could overthrow them. I think you should leave this. Uh, me and Russell. The thing is, I noticed, I, Russell, I noticed Russell's video, he was a little bit on the fence about it, you know? Yeah, because he still wants some, like, I think some people, it, we know it impacts brand deals. We know that there are people who sign off brand deals at companies and go, oh, but they disrespected the queen that time. And I don't know if that, that, that cuts off 50% of their audience. Apparently, we're not allowed our own opinions about stuff. It, it's perfectly acceptable to think that it's all right. By the way, this is the reasonable thing to think, that it's all right that a woman chosen by God was set to rule over this country. That's reasonable. We'll sponsor that. But what's unsponsorable is someone going, not sure about that whole woman ruling over the whole country thing, getting everything free. Yeah. That is unreasonable. Yeah. Do I sound mental when I that, say that's, that? That's the problem though, is th there's one thing. So w when the news, uh, the news broke about these marmalade sandwiches being left all over the fucking shop and mm -hmm. them going, if you could just stop leaving the marmalade sandwiches now, there's, there's, there's quite enough now. I thought, my God, I fucking hate this country. Why though? Do you I not like hate, this? I hate this country. I really hate what the you... pleasantry bullshit morons that we have outside in this country who who actually went to the lengths to do that, like who made a marmalade sandwich. Yeah, because I'm you just like a killing there's that so much, marmalade. 
there's so much serious issues in this country. We are now in a in basically a recession that's been caused by COVID and the lockdowns, specifically not COVID, the lockdowns where sure. we decided to shut the country down for the best part of a year and a half or whatever. And now we're paying the price for that mm -hmm. and we're calling it cost of living crisis because nobody wants to acknowledge the fact that if there hadn't have been lockdowns, this probably would never have fucking been the situation sure. we're in. So we'll call it cost of living so no one puts two and two together. And and yet their their concern is to make fucking marmalade sandwiches for a fucking dead woman who can't even eat them. Cheap tribute. Cheap tribute. Marmalade. If you buy cheap I imagine they'll buy expensive marmalade, but you know, we'll give her the good marmalade. We'll give her the good stuff. Give her the bloody good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Get her I was the stuff saving with the, that. With the bits in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't really know what happens when they rot. But they're the queen. No, well, the queen will rot, but the sandwiches. When the sandwiches go, what do you do? This is, that's the point. What, why are you, are you leaving them in cling wrap? I, that's what I kind of am curious. Like the second it rained in London, was there just a load of marmalade just draining away from where what, the queen what, was? What we what we saying then? How, how do we how do we cap this off as, in general? Like historic moments. Sure, I understand why some people are sad. She's she's been a figurehead for a lot of people in this. It's time. like when the Simpsons stopped, though. It's not like it's not. I get for these people like oh they've they've watched her a shitty Christmas speech every year but she's not impacting your life in any way shape or form she's she's un, she doesn't know you're you're existing and it's like when any form of it's a form of entertainment almost it's like oh the, we'll, we'll have a different presenter this year for the Christmas speech then. did you know they estimated she met three million people in her life well done know what I mean that's like a lot of people. Though, yeah. Right? That's but like when you say lot. met, it's like... Yeah, not... The, she didn't but, have an in-depth conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the point is, in, in our life, we are judged upon, in my opinion, what deep, impactful connections we can make with a small amount of people and how we can improve their life and, 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 and build something the very nature of the queen's existence was the opposite of that it was it was bullshit it was a lot of pleasantries mm -hmm. a lot of small talk but no real impact there and sitting on a gold throne taking all the money in while the idiots are brainwashed into believing that this woman is having any positive impact on society when all she is is a taker do you think that it goes the other way though where in britain and in general mass psychology a lot of people want to be ruled like this a lot of people maybe maybe they don't feel so extreme they want to be like you know tyrannical but a lot of people feel that they want something people, to people like security people yeah. like routine and, and so people like their affection yeah. towards people like, like feeling like this is a system and yeah. i am within that and i get it and I, that's the thing i realized during lockdowns when because i felt outraged that we were being told and we weren't giving a choice but when i looked and realized how many other people were just happy that we were going to be safe and all of that rubbish right and it was this is how you beat covid and no one was even wanting to question it so many people didn't and, and those who did were basically told that they were nutcases just for having and just, for, asking, just for asking just for asking i'm not really sure about this but then it's like do you want people to die? You know what I mean? It's right. like, well, we're probably going to have people dying in the long run anyway, because when the fucking shit hits the fan, we've got no fucking money, and people are going to die of starvation and other problems. I feel like so, Boris didn't do that very so well. So I do, he? no, but I, I, whether it was Boris or whatever, it, the mass psychology, it just made me realise how easily controlled this society that we're in is, and that if you have a mind of your own, you are attacked for it immediately. And I got no doubt we'll get a lot of um, hate on this podcast. And the great thing about not giving a fuck is I welcome it. Good, good for I, you. I welcome it. Do whatever. Yeah. You know, it makes no sense. Unlike the Queen, me. you uh, welcome much, this. Much like the Queen. Oh. Because I don't give a fuck about mass opinion either. Right. Just like she didn't. Yeah. Because either way, just like the Queen, I get paid. Me and the Queen. As got much a lot as in the common. Queen. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Who does your tampons? Charles, actually. Charles, Prince yeah. Charles. When you think of the Queen mm -hmm. and you like to imagine her, do you think of young hot Queen, you know, with the boobs? Did the Queen have boobs? She had, she was quite busty younger. younger really? Years. I don't really remember that. Um, I mean, maybe I'm just thinking of the girl on the crown. I think um, you are. Or do you think of old Queen? Old, white, r hair, wrinkled saggy tits so i queen. think of um i think of like early 90s queen i think 
Yeah. She had quite dry skin in the early 90s, which- um, A lot it, of she, powder. Yeah, like face, that yeah. was the fashion at the time mm. to be like, a lot of old women were quite powdery yeah. at that point. I remember a lot of my grandma's friends, when you'd look at their faces and sort of stare for a while, <laughs> you'd see they were sort of there was a like their pores were sort of almost clogged with powder yeah, yeah. because makeup wasn't as good back then mm. now you can clog your pores with like you know glossy shit yeah but back then it was more powdery shit yeah i wonder if the queen had been born <clears throat> later and came up in this era if she'd have been like an instagram hoe yeah but that's what i wonder is you know what like, I mean? but i don't like think just she posting would selfies which like i'm in africa today right yeah so sad in it yeah yeah Look see you later <laughs> next time <laughs> next time yeah hashtag next time from the queen yeah uh we'll give you all your shit back next time the queen in her crown <laughs> has a diamond or a, 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 a like an expensive a stone, stone yeah. yeah worth 400 to 500 million pounds it was taken from one of the colonies i think it's either india or uh, a very low they're like a lower we, down on we, the map. We did need it more than they did. Yeah. To be fair to the Queen, we needed it. In order to keep it, what they smartly did was set it into the crown so that when someone goes, can we have that back? They go, nah, it's setting set. the crown in it. Set, set now. now. So you can't see that. It's not removable. It's not, yeah, it's not we set out. it in. Yeah, well, we no, used, you just uh, melt it down. No, 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 we use super glue. Yeah, exactly. Next time. Next time. And then that's what happens. Mm. I, I like to imagine the Queen when she's in her like mid twenties. So sort of just after the World War Two, the Pro World War probably II. when that was when all the sex was happening in her life. Do you know all what I mean? All the sex, gagging for it. Right. Um, Do you think the Queen um, waited? <laughs> Do you think she kept herself for marriage? I think she was heavy petted. If I'm being honest, I think okay. she was heavy petted. And then she passed that on to the next and, generation. And, and then, he went, you know, there was a lot of fingering, uh, throat fucking going on. Around her. Um, I imagine <clears throat> that, um, what was his name? The German fella. Hitler. No, the other one. He was Austrian. <laughs> um, the other one. The one Franz who- Franz Beckenbauer. No, the, the German who she, she, she was fucking. I don't, I didn't watch The Crown. Prince- um, Prince Philip. Philip, Philip. Right. Her I, husband. I, I think Philip was was doing a lot of heavy petting on her. Right, yeah. In the um, same way as he was doing a lot probably, of heavy petting with racist he, words. No, he, he probably probably come in our house for a while just before. And then once they consummated the marriage in terms of like, once they got married, then it's the pussy. <laughs> The oh, royal yeah. butthole is ready, your highness. Of course, of course. What I really enjoyed when Prince Philip died. He uh, was a whoremonger. A what, sorry? A whoremonger. And what does that mean? So <laughs> Loved the, loved the whores. Uh, he was shagging about left, right and centre. Prostitutes. Center. Oh, everything, everything. It got back to the queen. I'm sure it did. Yeah. Yeah, when she did a test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the queen's got the clap, boss. The got, what are we going to do? What the fucking hell do we do? Well, it wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's there going, fucking hell, I've been fucking around. But has he been fucking around? Yeah. It must she, have been you. She, she was very close with the guy who uh, she bred horses with. How do you know all this stuff? I Is watched this the all from the crown? Yeah. Not a documentary. Not a documentary. But, but, suppose... but, but they take everything from truth, don't they? And then they maximize it. So I didn't realize, by so, the way, how so, many people were broadcasters and journalists who specialized in the Queen. Oh, like, yeah. All of these fuckers come out the fucking woodwork when this happens. They're loving it right now. Some of the, yeah, like this is their time to this get This is paid. their WrestleMania. This, yeah, this is, yeah, this is their one WrestleMania. Mm. If they're lucky, then maybe they'll get a death of Charles and a death of the Queen in their lifetime, mm -hmm. right? L you know, we're all hoping. Like it's, that's what Will, these guys William are hoping for. William would make for. a good king. William, would he? I don't know, just, just. Something people say, isn't just it? Just feel like he'd be better than his dad. His dad's annoying. William to me is the mini minter of the royal world. <laughs> Does that not make sense to you? Do you mean, Does William not remind you as like, I feel like Minnie Minter is the reasonable, you know, just personable, affable one of the family. Mm -hmm. He's not the deji, Harry. He's not, you know, um, Beatrice, bit too out there, probably a bit more niche, just does like ASOS brand deals. I'll, I'll you tell know, you who he's was, very mainstream. I'll tell you who was a right little slug. Lovable. Uh, the Queen's sister. Right. Mary. Uh, was it? Anne or Anne, Mary? Anne. Uh, Anne. Anne got, Anne got divorced. The loved the cock. Loved the cock. Yeah, she loved it. Wow. Yeah. Not the, the time or the, place some people would say, where, but... No, but that's what I thought of you for, because... Really? There was a bit where she cock. she got with this artist photographer type guy. Of course she did. And yeah. when you were saying you met Beatrice, I was like, you could have been him. You could have been that yeah. the guy just... 
I was wondering whether she sort of. I wonder. I was wondering why she sort of showed her face at this event because also when I left, I just happened to leave at the same time as mm-hmm. Beatrice. But I wanted to cross the road, and her bodyguard stopped me crossing the road and went, "Not now." And I was like, "Fuck, you don't I'm tell me where crossing to go. the road. You, you fucking, fucking tell me where to go." Uh, I was a bit drunk at the time. Uh, <laughs> and fucking tell me where to go. <laughs> and I just wander off down like one of these dangerous yeah. side streets. It was good. And time. then you just start singing, "Life or life or that." Uh, yeah, that was that was probably what happened at the time. Um, so yeah, I get it. Like a lot of them loved cock, is what you're saying. Basically, yeah. Should we should we look at other topics? Yeah. Now we put down the English public and it's a uh, glorious leader enough. Internet dating. Uh, that was a good Do you one. Mean, like dating app sort of thing. Yeah. Kind of finding people uh, are they good or bad? And what else we hear in here? No, no, do, do the dating app thing. Okay, well, there's there's lots of others, but we can. No, no, I'm interested. Uh, so talk to me about okay. internet dating. More dating questions here. Yeah. Uh, really? Is it good or bad? Um, do you know what? I think I think there's there's convenience in internet dating, which is a good thing, because. People are busy these days, Lawrence. You know, they're, are too, they they, though? they're making marmalade sandwiches. You sure. know, they're doing this, this stuff. They can't afford to take time away from work a lot. Especially, I think if you're in a built up area like London, I get why people would uh, see the value in it. Because there's that many people in London. The days of you being able to get out there and meet people who are in your area, it's impossible in London, right? Single local women in your area. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like. I guess when I was when I was a lad, uh, you know, in Newcastle, there was like a handful of places you'd meet girls, and you'd pretty much know they'd all all go at the same place. So, so this is how it worked when when say you and I were a little bit younger. Mm. What would happen is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday. Thursday wasn't really so much of a going out night back in the day when we were younger. Mm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, good times to go yeah. out. So the week would be building up in an almost like. You know, oh my God, I can't wait for Friday, can't wait for Saturday, can't wait. And then Sunday, you sort of come down and watch Top Gear. So there was dating apps back in, back in the day. Uh, right. Plenty and of even, fish. And even like MySpace when we were really young was almost like a dating app because you could still chat to people on there or whatever. Right. But now there's like, uh, there's that dating app, I don't know if you've heard of it, called Thursday, where basically they do events right. on a Thursday and everyone who's single kind of just goes and meets people. That's weird. It's, it is okay. weird, but also kind of clever because the the app kind of only works on a Thursday and you can match with people on a Thursday and you kind of forced into Every mo- Thursday. moving a bit faster than just being like... That's smart. That's the, Some people are quite gameplay, I tend to find. Although in real life, really, well, but the, I think that what they're trying to do is avoid time wasting, essentially, because right. I think there are some people on dating apps who are just... I don't know, just they're looking for an ego boost or whatever. And also there's a bit of indecision or, you know, they, they the, because of dating apps, there's always another person you could swipe or another person you could match with. People get to well, sort of throw people uh, yeah, away quite so that, easily. So that's a, that's, a, that's a good point, actually, because I do think that that's one of the negatives of dating apps outside of the convenience is it's the meat market feeling yeah, of it right. all. Where, and I think it's having a knock-on effect in relationships as well, because in our parents' era, for example, if someone met someone who they liked, it, it didn't feel like they had a million options because social right. media wasn't a thing. So you'd A, want to put more time and energy into that relationship. You wouldn't give up on it so easily. And if you did consider leaving, it would be a very serious decision. Divorce, shame, shame on you and yeah. your family. Uh, yeah. And it would, all, it would also feel like going to find someone new would be very difficult. So Because you used goods. It, well, it would, it would just just change it would be it would be a different outlook of it in terms of how am I going to find someone new where am I going to meet them yada 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 internet dating I think has caused people to treat men and women but all treating each other like well there's another one out the box whenever I need it so if you want exactly how I want you to be then why should I compromise? Why should I make any, um, you know, concessions for things that may be unperfect about you Mm. when I'm convinced because of the limitless amount of options that are in the box, 
I will find someone who is perfect. Well, then maybe you're not the one. If 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 that's the but if it's that's delusional. That no one is it, perfect. But it is delusional. But I don't want to go out with a delusional person. But the, you know but what I mean. The point is, is that it's making a society of delusional people. Sure. In my opinion, who mm. don't get me wrong. There are some people who are using internet dating, I'm sure, and have found the right person who, and they've made those concessions. They've gone, no, you're not perfect, but you're great for me and I'm happy, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Success story. However, I think we're, we're seeing a, a culture mm -hmm. being brought in where people are ghosting, people are rude, people are just very forward and whatever else, and they're not playing the dating game anymore. It's 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 very much like a I want everything and I want it now Fast kind of. Track, isn't it? Yeah, and and it's like it's like it's like Uber Eats meets dating. It's it's everyone expecting everything immediate now, easy, no hard work, no build up, and no concessions. It's it's like you're either perfect or and and because of that, there are going to be some people who are in the wrong frame of mind. Mm -hmm because of the system that they're playing in. And I guess by, they, they'll wake up when it's too late and be like, fuck, I've had all these dates with all these good people and I probably didn't- I've wasted. I've, I've didn't give it what I should have give it right. because I was kept saying, no, nah, not perfect, not perfect, not perfect. And then I'm down the road here with someone who, my options are now more limited because I'm getting older, I'm getting uglier. And now I'm like, wow. Uh, the doors are closing. Yeah, and I'm like, TikTok. actually, I should have settled for that chick fucking back then when I was fucking 28 or whatever. Have but I yeah. still got a number? No, she's now matched with Gary. Yeah, e exactly. Shit, <laughs> Gary. What yeah. a name. Um, Real name, Gareth. So, uh, in a way, it's great that people can meet that many people, but the negative impact is that I don't know if it's breeding quality relationships and a good attitude towards dating. I get that. I, I think the other side is some people are just meant to be single. Forever. Well, like, you know, um, I know a lot of people did sort of pair up and, you know, there were people who just weren't really meant to be together before dating apps. But now if you make it almost too convenient, it's like convenient for people who are just on the fringes. I'd like to make a dating app. What would you call it? True. Um, true love right true love it's good like that. Uh, um, mm -hmm. but I, what I mean is is I think for people who want specific things would you like categorise them yeah just so to you're be down to fuck well th things like things like so things that are important to women and things that are important to men that they can check off the list to like go like um, from cleanliness like, I mean yeah obviously but like Chivalry, thing, things where w women women care about, you know, like, are you going to pay for me on the first day and stuff? I'm not, I'm not saying all women do, but like, certain women have certain demands. Certain women want to know your income. Mm -hmm. They, they really care about, like, has this guy got some cash? His shit together mm -hmm. more, more than anything. Uh, men. So, if, if we're breaking down what the two are looking for, generally speaking, outside of general interests and getting along in terms of making each other laugh, which mm -hmm. is Im unpredictable. You can't really foresee whether that's going to be the case until you're in a room together. Well, will but, I make people laugh when I'm in a room with them? Pretty predictable. Yeah, I mean, make millions laugh on yeah, this show. Yeah, millions. Uh, but generally, it, relationships are transactional in, in a certain sense in terms of, and look, I know there's exceptions to the rule and a lot of women out there are not specifically with men for money and, and men aren't specifically with women for their looks. But as a species, men's finances do have an impact on their ability to date in terms of certain looks. Sure. And, and women's looks have an impact on their ability to get a man who is able to provide that. And has some status. I yeah, guess, exactly. Money, money can uh, what, often... What we find, if, if we look is that the more money a guy makes, the hotter the woman he's usually with. That is not a fucking coincidence here. I'm not a millionaire, bro. If you know, Maya Jama's fella wasn't a basketball player, but he was a fucking now, Uber driver, mm -hmm. would he be with Maya Jama? Obviously not. He may I, be an Uber driver soon. Do, I don't does think he's that make Maya Jama a gold digger? No. No, she's but, rich too. But, it, but what it does mean is that women find men with status more attractive than men without status. But is it also- That is, so, that is just part of the game. I, I I understand that. I think then there's also little nuances and uh, idiosyncrasies of that you can't really ever really tick off in a dating app. I feel like the dating app that, almost needs to be- that's what I'm saying. So what, what I think is you should be able to answer questions that are almost um, 
not public but that the system collates the data mm. so for example a really important one for men is how many how, how many dates are we gonna have to go on before okay. you that's quite crude but I, no but but i'm not putting this public i'm saying no no but what i mean by that is it's still quite a crude like you know when you're dating someone if you're like, it's, okay so if a man answers the question after three dates i'm looking to shag right uh, is that and, on the fourth or on the third just to be absolutely clear i guess after the third just to just for <coughs> this purpose the, the night of the third the night of the third a man, i think that that's quite normal uh, that uh, definitely judging from what a lot of people say i think that seems to be yeah. like a, a, a maybe a reasonable expectation uh, if you to a vibe in sexually if you're not mm -hmm. vibing sexually leave another few dates but, or but here's don't the stay thing. together here's, you're here's probably thing, not compatible right? or one it, of you is ugly but but there's also attraction wise there's a there's a lot of posturing there's a lot of playing the game but mm. realistically i believe that most women if they have a 15 minute conversation with you and you don't say anything dumb and you you seem like a nice guy and you look like their cup of tea they probably know all right if this keeps going i know i, I will fuck them you know what i mean because wow attraction usually takes seconds to work out yeah that's what i was kind of seconds. thinking but the, so the attraction element isn't i feel like that's a bit easier on a dating app what i mean is the stuff which is about the nuance of a relationship and the nuance of the hierarchy of society all those kind of things really a dating app should almost be like listen do you want to meet or not and that's as far as a dating app should go for me. Like, I don't think it really needs to go much further. I think the sooner you can get in a room that, with someone, okay. providing they're not a murderer or a rapist. Or, or a phone call, yeah. Wink, yeah. wink, candy. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe for the women out there, do a phone call first, just, yeah, to, just the, to vet this guy. What I'm saying is, yeah, sure. Like, there's a, there's a, maybe a bit of a longer process, and maybe there is a bit of a But this is process. why I'm saying... What I mean is, the, the sooner you meet... But that's the, the point. The sooner you can go, yes, no, maybe, okay. That's why we need a new dating app, where you can get more specific preferences I'd call it call me maybe because the more broad it is mm -hmm. the worse it is the worse it is exactly. because you're, you're getting a load of people who may not uh, fit within your preferences exactly so you we need to make this more specific like what are your um and, and this is going to sound mental but like I think it could work okay. right I'll go with you and so, then I'll so and like then for I'll women it, it could be like penis size I want it to be within these ranges okay what do you for, think what do you for think for men just to, we no, could I need say to know. tit size okay, I want I, it to be in this range right so what do you think the average penis size a woman is looking for in the modern day is well above average probably do you want do you think most women you think most women want an above average size penis i'd, I'd, I'd say or do you think they just want to think it's an above average size penis when actually it's probably about average or below statistically i don't know right because really most know men's that. penises are statistically smaller than the average penis well does that not make it not average then but th what i mean by that when i go <laughs> when, I, when i go average penis that's where i mean like what most people think is the average oh penis. okay okay yeah. okay well whatever but the point is is i think i don't think many women know what four inches the difference between four ruler. inches and seven no, inches. but the point is, is do you have to measure it like if you put a phone out like that i reckon most people go what have you got they go uh iphone pro max they go right do you want the dick to be bigger or smaller than this well that might be a way of doing it probably Probably. and do, then the woman it, goes is it bigger mm, than the bread bin it's yeah is it bigger than the bread bin and the queen goes oh well you can't tell that joke anymore can you she's, she's not it's here gone. anymore yeah they won't be able to play um christmas games so yeah um so sorry penis size breast size what do you think most people are looking for breast wise are we talking double d c cup i think double d is c yeah. cup i think is men, a re men like is a, reasonable men, men like a fucking set of d's on them Right. Throw some D's on it. Just, Remember that? Just got to get a leg. Kanye West. That was an old one, that. Um, do you... Okay, so men want boobs, women want a big dick. Well, no, but I'm just saying you can choose your preferences. Right. So, Any personality things, So some men will want small that? boobs because I've met men who like small boobs. Right, but a bigger bottom. And I was like, wow, you exist. Yeah. Then no. But some um, men like bigger bums or like men, a smaller yeah, waist. You, you should be able to be like... With a thick behind. If it, no, but not just that, like... Um, Chubby little thighs. Down, or, yeah, yeah. Down, you, could, you could pick almost... And then you whittle it right down. And then you get onto the really important thing, personality. Exactly. Right. So you know you want big tits, fat thighs, good personality. Well, for me, uh, boobs are lovely, don't get me wrong, and I am a big fan, but it's it's the bum that is the main thing. Right. I, I'm more of a person that, like, the older I've gotten, the less I care about that stuff. But the point I'm making is... You talk is about that, that a lot. No, but the point I'm making is, is that the more you can 
figure out what you are looking for whether that be in terms of personality we do a personality test as well so we'll figure out what their interests are they can tick off those sort of things we make it really i don't know if this is what match.com did i don't know but probably but, I don't, but no one uses that lie? anymore it's for don't, old don't people, people just, right? that's my point we're, we're wasting people's time what you need to do is go listen do you want to meet this person or not no, but that, no, but but the point is, is there's certain things about them, like maybe we could tick off like, was your dad nice to you? You know what I mean? Do you have daddy issues, basically? Well, yeah, that was what I was. That seems to be a huge issue in modern society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of I've, I've I've dealt with a fair bit of rage in my life from uh, people who don't have good relationships with their fathers. Yeah. Their father. Yep, absent yep. In some and, and, frame and don't get me life. wrong all the empathy in the world but I'm not a psychiatrist do you know what I'm saying so, you just shouldn't have to be yeah, yeah shouldn't have to yeah. shouldn't have to but you know and, and in many ways you're probably going to attract women who have daddy issues because you are a bigger I have no I mean let's man. be honest uh, if it wasn't for deadbeat dads I'd probably be a virgin so I do have a lot to uh, thank thanks thank deadbeat dads yeah shout out to the deadbeats out there do you know what I mean yeah um, but, band, but equally be better. Have a healthy relationship with your <laughs> daughters. Be That'd be great. Do better. Um, I get so, what you're saying. No, I think I think the more we can get, yeah. I think like for example, we could do a personality test to to, to work out how nice someone is. But uh, here's my because thing: because niceness, niceness, it should be a given. I but think it isn't. agreeability is probably one as well. Reasonable like that reasonability. Like, that sort yeah. of thing is a good one. C what I'm trying to work out is: are you going to be a fucking lunatic? Is this person logical? Or yeah, it should be like a psycho test, basically. Basically, yeah. Right, yeah. I think that's smart. Because I, I actually don't think... I, I want to know, I think do the, you shout often? Because if you do, we can't be friends. Right, okay. Right. What? It can't be friends? I want to be friends with someone who's screaming all the time. Oh, right, okay, yeah. You don't want to scream. Fucking lunatic. Yeah, yeah. But maybe in the bedroom? I mean, that's fine. Okay. So what I mean by that is you work out if they're a psycho, but then in a, in a bar... Things like how often would you have sex in a relationship? Right. Questions that are going to be important but to... wouldn't that change week to week? Like sometimes people no, want to have sex No, I'm just saying, give us a, a rough answer so the men who are looking at you have got an idea of, okay, this is what I'm going to be getting. But what if her sexual appetite increases when she sees a man but she's this attracted is the, everyone to? Everyone wants to hide everything and be like... Do they? Oh, no, but like people... people I think especially women feel like I, I don't want to give all that information over until he's taking me out and spent some money on me and prove that, that he crude? respects me. But we're, we're, we're just wasting everyone's fucking time. What we're doing, we're getting a guy to shell out money for three fucking dates. And ultimately, on the third date, when he realizes you're a twat anyway and he's wasted the money, wow. he's wasted your time. You could have been on dates with somebody who thinks you're great. He's a twat, maybe. I don't know, but the point I'm We're making is, twats, is there's a lot of time wasting going on. Right, no time wasting. What, what where if we got down to the nitty gritty, everyone says they hate small talk. Well, let's cut the fucking shit then. But small talk's important. It isn't, though. No, but it is. It sort of builds up the moment. And, you know, small talk is very no, but, often but, but, what you're doing point, during small talk is you're. You you're will have small talk, Lawrence. I'm, so not had, I, and, but, I'm not abandoning small but, talk. So I'm just I've, saying, can we just figure out if we're compatible? Or right. I think one of them should be the question should be it's not even really a question. It's just more of a, oh, the Queen's dead. And that you can gauge, because this is the kind of conversation I've had a lot this week. When the Queen first died, I met one of my neighbors in the lift. I was in a great mood. <laughs> and I was on my way home. I was on my way to see my family and my kids. Very down in the lift with me. Sort of cast quite a shadow. Oh, in. so you're buzzing to see the Benz. I'm buzzing yeah. to see the kids. And I uh, hold the door open for her because I know she lives on the uh, floor near us. And when we're in the lift, she goes, sad about the Queen, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, and, and she went, No. And th I'm not joking that she goes, she would choose the first rainy day of the year to go, wouldn't she? <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and in my mind, I went, I oh, know it's not the first rainy day of the year. She went, a gray day. It's, it's like she knew almost. And I was like, she's in Scotland though. She's no, I, 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 yeah, I would, I would like, I, you know what I would have said? I would have played along and I would have been like, just her, isn't it? Yeah. Typical. typical. No, no, but I did. If I, I, if I know the queen, and neither of us fucking do. Yeah. This is so her. Yeah. And this is such such a queeny thing. It's to so do. her to die on a rainy day globally. Yeah. 
And and so what should be fucking happening? morons, but absolute fucking morons, coming out with a shit. What I really love over you should the last have put week. her in a room with Graham soon. I said we'd had a right good ball in a whinge over it. What I really enjoy over the last week is the people who go. Of course, there have been some indiscretions within the family, but who doesn't have that? You know, who yeah. who hasn't got an uncle who touches kids or his own daughter's ass? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a weird clip, wasn't it? Yeah. A bit name Ari. You know, when he goes down and it sort of, his hand lingers on the bottom. I've got a photo with Neymar, so I can't really say that. I quite like them. Well, you can say it. Cool guys. Yeah, I mean, Neymar seems cool, but Neymar... Um, yeah, but it's his mother. I mean, I kind of feel like it's more appropriate to touch your mother's body than it is your child. Does that make sense? In a way, but I, again, I, stay away from the arse, whatever happens. Whatever you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, happens, yeah. stay away from the don't, 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 yeah. These don't, are, so these are the two the questions. Arse. Yeah. The Queen... Do you touch any of your family's bottoms? After On the dating site? Yeah. Oh, after right. you've gotten through those, do you want to meet this guy or not? Listen, if you're not a psycho, when you walk up to someone in a bar, you don't go interests and they go, um, I like movies and uh, long walks in the park. Mm -hmm. And you go, no. Like you have to, sometimes you're meant not to have, share every interest with a person. Sometimes you're meant to be, become more compatible. I, I just Bridge think we're, the we're, gaps between I, I people. Think we've, dating apps make it too hard. Dating apps make it too easy to fuck though. And that's part of the problem as well is because sure. men are out there like ravenous fucking Dogs. zombies, mm. right? And unfortunately- Like Epstein in a crash. I feel like women are changing in society because of what they're kind of going through in a romantic sense. Like dating apps are killing romance. And, and sure. because of that, women are becoming really jaded and fed up. I feel like with with men out there, there's very little romance in the world uh, right now. I get and, you, yeah, you know the 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 accidental bumping of the shoulder on the tube, and the guy turns around and <laughs> gives number, and, and you know, oh, it's all done. That does not happen anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, people, I people look at each other in public and go, "Yeah, I would definitely match with her on a dating app, but I can't talk to her in public, so therefore." I'm not doing anything. Right. Right. So so the point is, is I think this jaded attitude is turning women more masculine and men more fem like we, we, the gender rules are are not really there as much anymore. Where women they're becoming a bit closer. I think maybe. women are becoming sure. fed up as well. So they be they they Yeah, they're like fed up of men not being grown-ups basically. I, I, I kind of feel like that's happening. From conversations that we've had with people in the last year, mm -hmm. it's sort of coming across that way. I, I mean, I could be, I could, no, I'm I not the best you. guy to judge this, but I could be wrong, but, but I just feel like there's a, we're all fed up kind of vibe going yeah, on. Yeah, uh, and I do think that comes down to maybe a lack of maturity. There is that meme that I quite like where it's like, my parents at 23 and they're like buying a house uh -huh. and they're like, basically look like they're 50 mm -hmm. and then me at 23 and it's like just someone sitting in their pants on an xbox or whatever like, i mean that's partly down to the yeah the, the economy um but is that not also the infantilization of people like maybe there could be a bit more of like you know these apps well, do make you a bit it kind of makes it a bit too lightweight it's not nothing really feels very real you don't have anything if we had a realer world we but might have a bit you, you don't have to be accountable for the words that you're writing on a screen either Maybe so, that's, so, I guess and, so and as not we've always. seen with the youtube comments and that like people get very, very brave mean. and feel very uh you know big boy when, when in reality you would not speak like that to someone and i think the same probably applies to dating apps where women are probably hearing things uh, more more so women than men obviously women can be bitches as well um as men can be bitches um but you know um depends what they pay for i suppose <laughs> but um I mean, Prince Charles was writing this shit back in the 70s and there was no dating app back then, yeah, was there? So, so clearly this was always a thing, but what I mean is, is Prince Charles had developed a relationship with a woman where he knew that there was consent there and that she was more than happy to hear his weird shit. About Whereas women now, you could be one message in and boom, can I be a tampon, you know? And, right, and, and there's is, a knob in the chat or whatever. The, Don't dick send picks, a dick pic yeah, early. And all of yeah, that. unsolicited. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, be a gen be, try and be more of a gentleman. I just think... It goes a long way. Like you don't don't get me wrong. Like uh, you don't have to be perfect or anything. Do, do but think, I just think women would appreciate. Do you it. think though? It, it also it casts the net quite wide. So a man who sends a dick pic to hundred women, he's not looking for the women who are repulsed. He's looking for the one woman in the hundred that goes. That's my sort of thing. 
So, it, you, but you know what I mean I by that? No, I it's think, a, it's I think, quite a no, quick I, way I, I think of, of getting there, rid of a, people. People who do that, they, they get off on the fact that their women are just Soon looking enough. at them. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that is? That's a bit weird as well, isn't well, it's, it? Well, like, it's the same reason some men wear a raincoat and go and flash people in parks and shit like that. It's yeah, the same, a, but it's it's like a it's like a safer version of that for them. Do you know when I, when um I think when my mum was younger, they had um they had in the local area a peeping tom. Do you know mm -hmm. what a peeping tom is? Yeah, I think my aunt had one of those. Right, these the guy like, would like stare through the window at her. Yeah, when she was getting changed and shit. Yeah, yeah. So obviously she has a sister as well. So there are two young women in the house, and they used to see mm. a man outside in the bushes, <laughs> and uh, the police caught him in the end. But I thought, do so those people weird. exist anymore? You know, because of the internet, those people like. Do they just go on the internet now? Basically, yeah. Is that still then perverted if they go on the internet? Like, do you think- And this is another thing that you've just brought up in my head. I don't know if they do this, but they should. Verify um, before, like, so when we sign the betting apps, mm. we have to verify who we are. Passport and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to send a, a photo ID to prove that you're of legal age and, and all of that. And address and all sorts of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes getting on a betting app these days, like fucking hacking into NASA, Yeah, right? The point is, is- What, I'm finding out they're Dating filming. apps for security, for especially for women, obviously, but men as well, we, we, that all should be verified so that everyone you're talking to is the real person, there is no fakes out there, and you know who they are because people have been killed on Tinder and, and bullshit like that. Right. We've we seen the fucking Tinder swindler and mm -hmm. all of that. Like, there needs to be like proof of it. And, and I can't believe that they're not, I don't think they're doing that. You know what I mean? That that should be like a minimum. Yeah, or at least they've not been doing it. I don't. Obviously, we don't really know, but I guess there is that like that level of um, people probably go on a dating app and they have to verify something. But really, the app almost relies on you dating someone to verify it's you. Do you know what I mean? Um, no, but the, this is such at an easy thing, dead. though. There's such an easy thing, isn't it, to to sort out? So there's a lot, um, a lot of infrastructure in, in, in our dating app that we can make. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there that we've just brainstormed. People can go off and make it now if they want, I guess. Mm, I'd uh, like a cut, but, okay. but I would like a cut. Let us know. Um, some topics for the next chat we're going to do. We are going to try and do more of these podcasts. Of, of just what do you lot want us to talk about? Sure. Thoroughly enjoyed your input for the day. A big thank you to your now collaborators, the committee, uh, who Actually, we should call who, podcast who guides us. Who guides us? We've got plenty of other subjects to discuss. So yeah, thank you for your input and uh, God save the Queen, the fascist regime. <laughs>